If you're a married man, you know that there are certain times when your wife wants you to fall asleep and certain times when she doesn't. In the bedroom, for example, falling asleep is almost always encouraged. But, but in the living room, you know, when you're watching Oprah together or your wife's in the middle of discussing your much needed behavior modification, falling asleep is not so good. So what I've done is customized my favorite chair so it's gonna help keep me awake whenever I'm being criticized or irrelevant about it. See, uh, this here's a car battery. Got that wired into what was left of my windshield wiper after the car wash got done with it. Okay, so now I just hook up the battery and I got the whole system wired through this closed peg, kind of a dead man switch. So as long as I'm awake, I'm squeezing the peg, so to speak. And, and the whole unit is shut off. But as soon as I fall asleep and start relaxing, the windshield wiper comes off, starts poking me in the back, wakes me up. Okay, let's have a little demonstration here. I'll just sit here until I fall asleep. Let's see what could make me drowsy. Oh, I know, get the cameraman there to talk about having his colors done. this week yeah, and uh, we actually support a local charity that's looking for a cure to male pattern baldness <laughs> last night they had their annual charity dance it's called the hairball <laughs> so yeah people really cough up the cash Uncle Red yeah okay did you notice last night at the party I was the only person without a date no 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 Mike didn't have a date that woman was his parole officer oh. <laughs> yeah but even still you know I Everyone around here either has a girlfriend or a wife or something, you know, except me. What's wrong with me? It's only a half-hour show, Harold. <laughs> Look, I mean, have you asked any of the girls out around here? And there's plenty of them in the area. Oh, yes. I asked everyone. But, you know, you know what's weird? On Friday nights, every girl in this area either washes their hair or does their laundry. That's true. <laughs> I'm very concerned what all that soap runoff is going to do to the ecosystem. <laughs> well, maybe you should go to where you can meet girls, like... Like, go to the laundromat or the shampoo store. Yeah, I, I got a better idea than that. Is that our local Yellow Pages? Yeah, both of them. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. Video dating service. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You make a videotape of yourself talking about yourself, and then you send it to this company, right? Video Mate, and that way, your prospective date, she gets to hear and see me even before she meets me. <laughs> okay, but you're saying that like it's a good thing. Don't be so negative. Your generation didn't have video dating, and look at all the horrible mistakes they made. That's ridiculous, Harold. Who told you that? Aunt Bernice. <laughs> He's got me a question, guys. Wicked! Receive this coupon for two hours alone with a finicky lawnmower and a 10 pound sledgehammer. <laughs> no questions asked. Okay, cover your ears. And uh, Mr. Green, you got 30 seconds to get Dalton to say this word style. Style. Yeah, all right, Mike. And go. Uh, okay, Dalton, your clothes, your shoes, the car you drive are all part of your personal commitment to recycling. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, no, I'm talking about like your, well, well, like your hair. Okay, it looks that way because of your special... Uh, 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 a vacuum cleaner attachment. <laughs> no, okay, okay, okay. Let's say you're going to take Anne-Marie on a world cruise, okay? So you bought her a brand new wardrobe of cruise wear. You got the best stateroom on the whole ship. I mean, you did everything first class all the way. People would say, Dalton, you're really going in... Sane. <laughs> Almost out of time, Mr. Yeah. Green. Okay. <laughs> okay, Dalton, Anne Marie likes to go shopping all the time because she wants to stay in debt. <laughs> Woman spends money like it's going out of style. There we go. Way, <laughs> hey, Red Green, what a big 
surprise. Woo <laughs> you asked me to come here, Gord. I know, but I like making a big fuss over my visitors. That right. way they may stay longer. <laughs> what do you like having for breakfast? A conversation with my wife. Right, okay, message taken. Yeah. Absolutely. With Ranger Gord, there's no strings attached. You're free to come and go as you please. Okay. Oh, please, don't go. <laughs> so cold. Right? Yeah. Ah, come on. <laughs> let's, uh, let's sit down. Huh? Yeah, please sit down. Sit down yeah. What, what did you want? What did you want to talk to me about, Gordon? Yeah. Right. About my new career. Red. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. Yeah. Red, when you think about me and my life, what's the biggest mistake you think I've made? Boy, there's so many to choose from, Gordon. <laughs> no. Being an employee. Okay, that's the big one, but no more. I've decided to go freelance. A freelance forest ranger? Oh, sure, sure, absolutely. Forest fires can spoil almost any social event. Weddings, bar mitzvahs. Ever been a forest fire at a bar mitzvah? Not yet, but why take the chance? Hmm? And there's plenty of other employment opportunities. Strip malls, uh, retirement villages. I mean, red, come on. Old people with barbecues? <laughs> Here's my new business card. Ranger Gord, freelance forest ranger, where there's smoke, there's Gord. I was hoping you could pass that out to everybody. Oh, do you have any more of them? I did, but they burned. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you could read the information and then pass it on, kind of like a chain business card. No phone number on here, Gord. Yeah, red, I don't have a phone. Okay, uh, you know, you might need to rethink this uh, whole thing. Like, what is your income right now? Ooh, gee, do you need an exact amount? No, just, just ballpark it. Okay. Uh, ooh. Uh, zero. Uh-huh. Okay. So any additional freelance income that you make is going to put you in a higher tax bracket. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I'm getting from you that you think I'm better off if I stay in the tower. Gord, you stay in the tower, everybody's better off. You bet. All right. I love you. You know, around here, we get our drinking water from Possum Lake. Years ago, that never bothered me, but of course, back then, you could get a six pack for only a buck seventy nine. So this time on Handyman Corner, I'm going to show you how you can make your own water. Okay, we're going to start with rainwater coming right off the roof, because this is pure, unpolluted water coming straight from heaven. All we got to do is filter out the leaves and the bird feathers and the moldy chestnuts, and boil it all up, and we're beating the system. Okay, first thing you want to do is take off your downspout, cut a slot near, down near the one end. That's your first stage filtration right there. Catch the finer stuff, pantyhose. Not just for holdups anymore. Oh, I gotta run. Okay, now you would just run your, your downpipe just straight off the end of the building there, but uh, I put this extension on ours because there's a, there's a wet spot over there and what looks like Moose Thompson's footprints. I just, okay. What I'm gonna do now then is just uh, jam this up in here and that takes care of our filtration unit. Now we need something that'll catch the water and then distill it. I wanted something small and portable that had the same engineering sophistication as those high-end water purification plants they use in the larger metropolis areas. And I think I've done it. <laughs> oh, yeah. The metal container here is going to catch my filtered rainwater. Barbecue makes it boil, and the wagon makes it portable. Now I just need it to rain. waiting for the rain to stop so I can test my drinking water. And this smart guy dropped 50 cents into my tin cup. <laughs> People are so cheap. Okay, let's see what we got here. Tea. 
kind of a shingle pico. <laughs> I'm sure you get used to it. But the main point is you're providing something for yourself and your family that you know is completely safe. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, Should at least find your handy. <laughs> Any of you guys with a full, healthy head of hair might want to ignore this part. <laughs> but for the rest of us, I want to talk a little bit about bald spots. <laughs> You can never be fully prepared for a bald spot. They kind of creep up on you. And they come up from behind, so you're usually the last one to even find out. <laughs> and I believe that a bald spot is uh, some alien life form of some type. <laughs> it's a lot more sensitive than the rest of your skin. I mean, the sun burns real easy. It's the first thing to feel cold or rain. It's the first thing to sweat if you're in trouble or eating Mexican food or both. <laughs> I think it's because uh, it's a lot younger than the rest of your skin. <laughs> I mean, everything else is maybe 50 years old, but your bald spot's only been around for the last three. <laughs> That's why it's so smooth and perky. <laughs> so instead of thinking of a bald spot as an embarrassing sign of old age and rampant decay, why don't you think of it as sexy? Huh? They say hair loss is from having too much testosterone, so that's a pretty good start. I've already established that it's smooth and real sensitive. So I'm suggesting that a bald spot is the ultimate erogenous zone. A powerful love badge that's only given to the most manly of men. There. Now do you feel better about your bald spot? Me neither. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. When the air at your place gives you the bends, when you've lost all contact with family and friends, I have a truck that pumps as it mends, because this is where the food chain ends. <laughs> and I'm ready for my close-up, people. Let's go. It's the only tape I could find, Harold. That camera's some kind of discontinued one-off format. <laughs> <laughs> Thetamax videotape made in Portuguese Macau. Okay, well, you, all you gotta do is provide the lights and the camera, and I'll provide the action. All right, Harold. Here we go. on. Action, Harold. <laughs> I said action, Harold. Go. I am going. This pause is part of my video. Not a good idea, Harold. You're giving her time to change her mind. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear you come in. Well, I just came in. I was just talking to you. I came upstairs. I was just talking to you about... Not you! My date! Please, please forgive my technical assistant. Non-union. <laughs> please, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Harold Green. And might I say, you look lovely this evening, slash and all day. Hmm? That it? No, shh! I'm listening with the young, lovely... Fun-loving, non-smoking lady has to say. Hmm? Oh. Oh, you want to come closer? Well. Oh, uh, got a bad wheel here, Harold. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm so... Oh, closer? Well. <laughs> Certainly, come closer. Boy, I don't know, Harold. I'm not sure the camera can grab all those teeth. <laughs> closer. Closer! Harold, we're getting a lot of light off those molars. <laughs> we're pinning the needle here. Call me, call me, call me, call me. Call 911. You need to put a signpost up behind the lodge so we agreed to all meet, meet around there and a few extra things in the van. But then uh, 
Signpost was in there. Dalton, uh, he grabbed the pickaxe. We needed that to kind of dig the hole with, and uh, I grabbed the post and actually uh, snagged on something. So I asked Dalton, maybe give me a hand there. Give me this horse right out of there. And so I, I'm not sure what it was caught on at that point. And then I, I realized it was actually caught on Walter. <laughs> So, and Winston was supposed to be, but he had fallen asleep at the switch, so to speak, and uh, so Winston just got to, it's a matter of waking him up. Uh, you don't get much sleep in the sewage business. So he just clips that on. Then, you know, the, the ground around the lodge is very odd. There's hard spots and there's soft spots and there's kind of in-between kind of clay stuff. So, uh, you know, you just, you just take your chances. So Winston picked the spot and he got in there, but he just, he got down a certain point, but he couldn't get it all the way in, so Walter gave him a little hand on that, and that's just... <laughs> So I'm thinking, you know what? Let's just try. Let's just try another spot. Maybe, maybe there's a softer spot here. Uh, okay, no, that's a little too hard. And then Dalton figures he would he would try a pickaxe. The trouble with that is you don't know what's down there. And uh, I'm guessing uh, some kind of a buried cable. And uh, yeah, absolutely right. So then, well, we got to get that out of there. So we're gonna we're gonna get that out of the way. I'm telling Winston go back and get the possum van, and we'll we'll use that. We'll pull it out with that. So Winston noticed the the breaker had that trip, so he just uh, not the best idea. Yeah. But he did get the van there, and we hooked that up to the end of the the end of the cable. And the idea is we're just gonna pull it right out of the ground that way uh, using the possum van. So uh, I went and got in the van there, and then just I didn't I don't like to look back in life and. Uh, unfortunate. Uh, so then I thought, well, if I back up and, and take a, a run at it, as I do with most things in my life, I thought perhaps that would work a little better. But what happened there was all I was doing was actually pulling on the cable instead of, and I was pulling the hydro pole down into the ground and then up through the hole that the cable come up through. And, and of course, the guys were noticing they're trying to stop me before we got into any real kind of trouble. Now, I say, you know, we can always find a positive side to everything. So I'm thinking, wait a second. We don't need to put up a sign post. We've already got the post. Just take the sign off that one, stick her on the hydro pole, and it really serves the purpose, which is call before you dig. We've all seen these motion detector units that turn the lights on. When you come home after dark so that you can see where your kid left his bike, the problem is they do the same thing for burglars. They turn the lights on when they're sneaking around after dark so they get to see where your kid left his bike. <laughs> now, of course, some people overreact by getting bear traps or landmines or some type of homemade nuclear device. I guess the sensible thing would be get a guard dog, but then you got to feed it and take care of it and make sure it knows who you are. Well, I got a better idea. I got one of these high-pitched whistles that can only be heard by dogs and unmarried librarians. And I attached it to an air compressor. Now, instead of just the light coming on, see, every time a burger goes by, this is going to kick on the compressor, which will wake up every dog in the Tri-County area. Huh? See? You don't need money, as long as you have... When the grass in the back's growing higher and higher, when your smoke alarm's screaming, but there's nothing on fire, send me an email, a card, or a wire. I'm quick and I'm dirty, but I'm always for hire. Well, I didn't have much luck fixing Harold's tape for the <laughs> videotape dating sir. I think you just submit it like that. It pretty much represents his personality. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Red. I hope those flowers aren't for me, Harold. <laughs> no, they're for my date. I went with a computer dating service instead. That's called Love is Blind. Oh. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> really good. Yeah. So you just give a short bio of yourself, and then they match you up with someone with similar interests. Oh. I think it's way better, yeah. you know? Video doesn't flatter me. No. Life doesn't flatter you, Harold. <laughs> so shouldn't you be leaving? No, no, no. They're sending my date here to the lodge. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Get this description. Listen to this. Listen to this. Attractive. <laughs> Self-employed, ambitious, creative. Early. <laughs> take it easy, take it easy. <laughs> Sorry, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Hey, don't freak out, Harold, okay? <laughs> freak out, Harold. Harold?
fun, Twisted. I don't understand. That computer was supposed to set me up with my perfect match. What you got? My, my ideal, ideal date. date. A nice, nice dinner. A good, good movie, movie. And a little stimulating conversation. conversation. Well, you guys better get going if you're hoping to catch the early movie. You are so buying the popcorn. <laughs> Meeting time, Uncle Red. Yeah, thanks, Harold. People have fun, eh? <laughs> so if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And Harold is right. Love is blind. By the time he gets finished with it, it'll have lost all its faculties. <laughs> Speaking of which, I don't think I've ever felt so wide awake. And to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Sit down, sit down, everyone. Have a seat there. That's the way. Okay. All right. One more. I'll leave one this more time. Sit down. All right, man. Bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. That was uh, kind of a short date. Yeah, and Winston had to leave for an emergency call. Oh. So he left you for a younger load.